Hey guys, welcome back again. Dave's Dimension, welcome back again for another video. Welcome back again to the channel. This is your home for tech, toys, and talk, and of course, all the channel where chaos and insanity will always reign supreme. So we're back again with another video. Um, now, I did a video on the first special, uh, first Doctor Who special, uh, the 60th anniversary Doctor Who special, featuring the return of David Tennant and Catherine Tate as the, well, now the 14th Doctor and Donna Noble. Now, I didn't do a video for the second one. We're just going to jump ahead into the third one, which, uh, oh boy, uh, this was a doozy. And by the way, full disclosure, yes, the dimension's a little bit of chaos. I'm working on a little patch collection right there. Uh, but full disclosure, we are going to be talking spoilers. So if you have not seen this special yet, if you've not seen the third one, The Giggle, if you haven't seen that one yet, then you want to pause this, or better yet, hop in your TARDIS, go ahead and watch it, and then come back, and let's continue. Um, this was oh, this was everything I could have hoped for. Um, Neil Patrick Harris, NPH, was the villain we've been waiting for. Now, the Toy Maker is a character that's been around since, well, the very first Doctor, <clears throat> William Hartnell back in the 60s so i mean this was i think he was an amazing incarnation of the toy maker he killed it his personality his voice just everything nph frigging nailed it he killed it man um i dare say that we haven't had a villain or an actor portray a villain as deliciously evil and maniacal since um uh, well, huh, David Sims, his variation of the master, uh, I mean, or, you know, just, just insanely awesome. Um, only one other person really comes to mind. Only other person who has been so amazingly awesome as a villain, Michelle Gomez with her stint as the miss as Missy, AKA the mistress master, um, and pH friggin' killed it. Uh, we had we had suspense we had horror right in right from jump um the doctor and donna you know traveling all over coming back to earth we get the little scene with with wilf i mean you know much love and respect you know moment of silence for uh bernard who played uh wolf from uh wolf mott and he just yeah i wish we could have had more more time with him he he's actually been around in Doctor Who for a very very long friggin' time. Uh, he played in the original series as a unit soldier a couple times, and he, of course he was amazing during uh, the Don the Noble series, uh, and of course the End of Time Part One and Two. Uh, he's just a great character. Uh, it was nice to do a little little nod to him, have him appear, and you know, I was kind of hoping we would uh, get a little bit more, but you know. Uh, time, space, and time did not allow us that, but it was it was great to see him in there. Um, Donna and the Fourteenth Doctor. I mean, definitely a lot of we're noticing some subtle differences with the Fourteenth Doctor, and I think that's tremendous because you got to think if the Tenth Doctor lived or went on the adventures that Eleven, Twelve, and Thirteen were on, where would his mindset be? After the losses, after the flux, you know, after facing the silence, after, you know, River Song. I mean, just, you know, where would the four, where would the 10th Doctor be? And David Tennant, of course, brilliant. Just, just amazing. Um, <clears throat> now, the story about, you know, the 14th Doctor, once he realizes that it's the toy maker at work, he's, he has remorse. He has guilt. That it's because of him that the toy maker got a foot a foot into our universe, and he is he is beating himself up. We see, you know, the doctor, you know, unit picks him up, says, "Hey, we, we need you at HQ." We see Mel, Mel, <laughs> uh, you know, a, a past companion from the original series. We see her working with unit, 
brilliant. She looks amazing for her age. Uh, just, just tremendous. We, Kate Stewart. I mean, first, you know, we hear a lot of people talking about the new Doctor Who is very much almost Marvel esque. And hell, look at Unit HQ. Friggin' look like uh, Avengers Tower. Uh, I mean, certain things you cannot you cannot avoid but i'm sure you know richard t davies is having a little bit of fun with that too you know i mean why not uh i mean kate stewart is brilliant uh just amazing uh just everything is the to me there were no slow moments i know there are other people who have reviewed this this special and they've said that there are some slow moments not everyone is going to be happy with this uh episode not everyone is me. I'm freaking happy. Um, I watched it with Mrs. Dimension. There were a certain, there was a few spots she wasn't too keen on. And then right towards the end of the series or the end of the episode, she looked at me. She's like, I hate you. I was like, no, you don't. Because I kind of, I kind of was predicting or hoping for something to happen. Uh, the past couple weeks, I've been saying, I really wish certain thing would happen. And it did, but we're going to get into that a little bit later. Um, we see the doctor and Donna, they find out that their origin, there's a signal that is driving people uh, to argue. It's messing with their brainwaves. But Mel, Donna, Wilf, and of course the doctor, all four of them are not being affected by it. Guess why? Long-term travel within the TARDIS. Well, now if you're wondering, wait a minute, Wilf didn't do any long-term travel. He did travel inside the TARDIS. Okay. The doctor, and during the end of time, you know, he picked up Wolf and they went to, you know, they didn't go through time, but they went through, t through, uh, you know, somewhere else on the planet that the Na Naismith uh, mansion. <clears throat> so technically he did travel within the TARDIS. So there was a little background radiation enough to protect him. So that was awesome. And they were wearing these little arm bracelets to kind of protect their, the brainwaves. But we find out that the source of this is the very first giggle, the very first laugh, the very first image that was ever captured when television was becoming a technology, when it was being developed. So the doctor gets an exact date, and him and Donna hop into TARDIS, go back to the time, and basically it's a house of mirrors, uh, so to speak, that they are trapped inside, and they have to maneuver. It reminded me of the... Uh, I'm trying to think of this specific episode. I think it was called, uh, I forgot what the full title, but it was something complex. It was an 11th Doctor episode where the Doctor, Amy and Rory, were in this old-style hotel, but it really wasn't a hotel, but a prison. People from different points in space and time were kind of pulled into it. Uh, it, it gave me echoes of that, you know? And there was a lot of craziness. We get some marionettes. We get some creepy ass dolls and just a whole maze and, and everything. And doctor is just, he is dreading. He's, he's hating on himself. He has all this remorse that, you know, the realization that, you know, the toy maker is here and it's all because of his interaction with the doctor, not necessarily David Tennant's doctor, but the doctor's earliest incarnation that we know of the first doctor played by William Hartnell. Uh, and this, you know, it plays back and the doctors, you know, David Tennant does a great job of showing remorse, hating on himself, so to speak, you know, and, you know, this is, this is something that was lacking during the Chibnall area era of Doctor Who. And not just by me, my wife even said that, you know, the, the shared, uh, anger, the frustration, the remorse, the loss, the anguish that the doctor felt and, you know, blames himself or their self for, um, is what was missing in the writing or in how the show was ran, not the portrayals because the actors, again, you've heard me say this in past, uh, episodes, the portrayals, the doc, the actors can only do so much, you know, you know, it's like, Hey, if I give you a, uh, you know, a tray of clay and I tell you, Hey, I want you to make, uh, you know, I want you to make a, uh, a car. Well, <laughs> it's going to be kind of hard to do that. You can maybe shape a car, but it's not going to be able to do a lot of things that it can do. Same thing with, you know, if I give you, you know, 
ingredients to, to make a souffle, uh, you know, you're going to be able to do the best you can, even though you may not have all the ingredients to do so. Same thing with acting. Uh, but let's get back to the topic at hand. Uh, we see the doctor facing with, with the toy maker. They kind of go mano a mano and the toy maker actually wins, but the doctor beat him the first time. So now it's a tie. So he decides, Hey, well, let's take this to 2023 toy maker vanishes, goes to 2023. And the doctor and Donna are running out of this maze of, of horrors that is rapidly collapsing around them. They make it out and they realize they need to get back to unit. They get back to units and the toy maker is there. He does Neil Patrick Harris in true Neil Patrick Harris fashion. Um, he is, he, he reminds me a lot of, uh, Mitsuplitalik from, uh, DC. Uh, he's a fifth dimensional imp who can do whatever he wants and can pretty much get away with whatever he wants. The toy maker can pop up here, there, everywhere, almost like Q from Star Trek. Think of that, but think of him like cranking up to 11, um, uh, no pun intended, um, uh, or 14 in this case. He goes and does a, a Spice Girls number, and soldiers are aiming, firing at him, and nothing but flowers, rose petals, hint, hint, wink, wink rose uh, petals are, are popping out of the guns. Um, there's a few unit soldiers who are, are killed in the process, thanks to the toy maker. Uh, the doctor, you know, resolves that he has to face the toy maker one last time. They get out to this platform. There's this laser that they're going to use to try and stop the toy maker, but the toy maker gets his hands on it. Ultimately, the toy maker decides that, hey, you know what? The first doctor beat me. I beat you. So we're doing the best two out of three. Guess what? The third game, I'm going to play with the next doctor. So he decides to fire full blast at the 14th doctor, David Tennant. We can see the beam piercing him coming out the, coming out his backside. We see 14 about to, you know, he, the regeneration aura is starting to appear on him and both Mel and Donna come to his aid. They both declare, do whatever you want with us. We're going to be next. We're going to be beside him at this time. And he's like, handmaidens you know mph is like you know toy maker he's like oh handmaidens go you know like whatever you know and the doctor is feeling the regeneration you know he looks at both of them and you know he's thankful for them he says you know they they, they said you know we know this isn't the end you're going to change your face but you're going to be you're still the doctor and instead of his whimsical line that he always seems to say when he says farewell, you know, I don't want to go. He didn't say that. He just said, well, it's time. And the aura kind of just vanishes and he's still him. He's feeling weird and different. This is now, of course, we still don't know the conditions of why the doctor regenerated into, into number 10's face to begin with. We still don't know the conditions of that, and I'm sure we're going to find that out in the future. Uh, but he he's feeling weird. So he tells Mel, tells Donna to grab his arm, grab his other arm, and pull. This is a weird, This is the first time for us in Doctor Who. Russell T. Davies, I've said he's the chosen one. I've said he's the golden one. And he proves it once again. Because as Mel and Donna pull on the, the 14th Doctor, the aura reappears. And then suddenly, there's two faces. There's two halves. We see the bottom half is like one body. But then we see the top half is Shudi Gatway. And then the other half is David Tennant. And they're like, they're just blown away by this. And he's like, Shooting Gatway, the 15th Doctor, number 15, says, you know, that this is brilliant. And he says, we'll push off. So Tennant is pushing. They push off on each other. And he splits. We get the 14th Doctor and the 15th Doctor in their own body separate. 
this is a bi-generation, not a regeneration, but a bi-generation, almost like mitosis, where they're able to split. One cell becomes two. We still don't know what specifically is the cause of this because I think it's definitely connected with why David Tennant, why his image came and regener why he, why 13 regenerated into him. I think the story is not over. Your story is not over yet. Your song is not over. Um, this was, and the two of them, blown away by this, all in shock, but feeling energetic. They both take on the toy maker. They say, we challenge you. And, you know, toy maker can't refuse it. He can't refuse the challenge. He just can't. So they play a game of ball where they, you know, they're tossing a ball and whoever misses loses. Well, it's just so weird because you got 15 who's wearing a tenant's uh, dress shirt and tie and his briefs. A tenant is like in a long sleeve under undershirt, so to speak, almost like a thermal kind of jobby. Vest, pants, no shoes. The shoes are on 15. It's kind of hilarious. So the two of them are taking on the toy maker in this game of ball. And at one point, you know, 14 looks at 15. He's saying, hey, 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 I'm on your team. You know, uh, it's it's a bit of fun. It's a bit of amazement and awesomeness. Russell T. Davies, I doubt that you're going to see this video. But thank you so freaking much. You have regenerated Doctor Who. Um, I mean, you did it back in 2005 when you brought the show back. And it has evolved so much over all these years. And you, you did amazement. You saved me. You saved my hope because I did not want to see David Tennant completely vanish away in a regeneration. And you did that. Uh, they defeat the toy maker and the toy maker starts to become two dimensional and gets trapped into this little box. But before doing so, you know, he, he, he basically hints and says that, you know, there's, there's other forces in the works. Now go back to the first special of the 60th anniversary. We heard the meek say that there was their boss was someone or something that is even more powerful. So, so obviously there's a lot of forces at work here. There could be some weird cosmic force that is allowing the toy maker to come through that is controlling the meek that maybe even had a hand in forcing the 13 to generate specifically into 14. We don't know. These are all what ifs, but Toymaker get, gets destroyed, but he had a golden tooth that popped out and is laying on the edge and is picked up. Now, earlier in the, sh in the show, he had mentioned that his golden tooth, he trapped the master in there. And we hear a, a villainous laugh, so we know that we're going to get a new master or possibly an old master. I mean, anything is possible. For I mean, we had David Tennant come back. Could we get David Sims? Can we get Missy? Anything is possible. Right now, all that we know for sure when it comes to Doctor Who, all bets are friggin' off, and I cannot friggin' wait. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the 15th uh, on his solo adventure this Christmas. Stay tuned on Disney+, Plus, and if you happen to be in the UK, of course, get ready to watch it on iPlayer. On Christmas Day, I cannot friggin' wait. Uh, I definitely think that this is going to be a very different doctor, though. Uh, 15 had, you know, the, we had, you know, usually we're used to seeing the doctor regenerating to a new doctor, and then we actually see them pop into action on the next special. We had a team up, 14 and 15 working together, talking together. Now, not only do we get a by generate or by generation of the doctor, so now the 14th and the 15th are two separate beings who are living forward. Totally amazing. But they have a discussion. What about the TARDIS? You know, 15 says that, that you know, he that he's about to go traveling the universe. He's a, 
What you, you get to travel? What about me? And fifteen sparks. He's like, oh, wait a minute, just maybe, just maybe, because the toy maker's realm, his his essence, his his powers are still in a state of play. You know, it's kind of like you know when tens uh, when uh, David Tennant was ten and he regenerated, and he was within so many hours of his regeneration cycle. His hand lopped off, and he was able to regenerate a new hand. Well, I think they played, they used that same rule here because 15 opens up a panel, pulls out this old style looking hammer, like a mallet, and says, Maybe, just maybe, we can do something here. He leads Donna and 14 out of the TARDIS. And of course, Kate left Stewart, left for Stewart and her uh, scientific lead. I'm forgetting her name right now, but please don't don't kill me. I actually think she's cute. Uh, but uh, he he says, you know, and 14's like, what? What are you what are you about to do? He says, listen, we beat the toy maker. You know what you get, sweetie? You get a prize. So he takes the hammer, this mallet, and he swings it. Hits the side of the TARDIS. We get two TARDISes now. How freaking amazing is that? I know a lot of people like are probably there's a lot of people saying, what the fuck? But guess what? We get two, we got two doctors. Let's have two TARDISes. This was my dream come true. This is what I said to I told my wife, I'll say, I would love if there's some way that we could have 14 still be out there in the universe somewhere. I don't. I don't want to see David Ten David Tennant's Doctor end because, honestly, I mean, I grew up watching the original series. Okay, Tom Baker is one of the greatest. Peter Davison Tennant's uh, father-in-law. Uh, <laughs> that's weird. Uh, though those are some of my, some of my favorites. But in the new era, I like Matt Smith a lot. Peter Capaldi is amazing. If you ever get the chance to meet him in person, he is friggin' amazing. But David Tennant's my Doctor. He really is my doctor. I mean, I even have, if you guys can see uh, down there, I have a one-tenth scale 10th doctor, uh, or not one-tenth, but a one-sixth scale uh, Doctor Who figure. Uh, so, I mean, he's just one of my favorites. Uh, so, yeah, we have two TARDISes now. They look identical on the outside, but on the inside, uh, they're both the white interior, just like 14's uh, interior was, but... 15 has a jukebox in his, and they made a little, the front part of the TARDIS here actually folds open to be wheelchair accessible. Hint, hint, wink, wink, which means that scientific advisor from Unit is definitely going to be on some adventures next season. And I cannot wait for that. <clears throat> and in a way, that's kind of, uh, kind of about time they kind of did something like that, you know inclusion and all uh, but i think she's she's brilliant the character is freaking phenomenal so i can't wait um but we see that each of them have their own tardis now okay 15 pops into his tardis he starts sending the controls changing the lights a little bit and him and 14 and are talking for a few minutes you know because it comes to the point where you know he says he, he says listen it's time for you to you know to you know to you know just basically you need to heal yourself because 14 has all the rage all the all the anger at himself at the people he's lost you know jamie and so many others atrick i mean so many people who've been lost over the centuries and it's time for 14 to heal you know because even when he was 10 to him, he he was. This is before the revelation that Gallifrey was saved, courtesy of ten, eleven, and the War Doctor. Um, so it was he. He carried so much rage and anger, and didn't talk about things, kept things bottled up. And you know, he he as ten, he even said that you know, in the end, all the companions, all all the people he's traveled with, you know, they leave, and in the end, they break my hearts. So I mean, this is you know, this is a. The 14 needs to heal and he's given this chance because, you know, Donna says, you know, you know, you can stay here. You can stay here. You can have a life. And, you know, 15 says, you know what, guys, 
I'm about to go traveling through the universe. Time for y'all to pop off. He says, pop off, old man. And Donna's like, wait a minute. Actually, he's the young one because he you came up after him, so you're the old man now. So he's like, okay, kid, come on, go. So he hits the lever. His TARDIS is about to start taking off, so Donna and 14 exit his TARDIS. They watch that TARDIS vanish. And there we are. 14 is, you know, he's got his own TARDIS, and he could potentially go wherever he wants. Um, now, it, by the way, there's little bits and pieces I've skipped over in this episode. You definitely still have to watch this episode. Uh, Donna is given an opportunity. She's actually given a job offer by Kate Lethbridge Stewart, which means if Donna's going to be working for you today, the 14th doctor, since he's staying on earth with his TARDIS, almost like the third doctor, who knows? We could have it where, you know, if something's going on, unit reaches out to the 14th doctor. We could have a separate season with the 14th doctor and Donna, maybe solving things on earth or who knows if they bring back Torchwood. Come on, Russell T Davies. I know, I know you're crafty as hell. Um, if he somehow brings back Torchwood, you can have the 14th Doctor helping with Torchwood every now and again. Not every episode, but maybe popping up a few times. And I'm sure David Tennant is more than more than open to that. I mean, why else would they write things that the 14th Doctor is on Earth? That he has his own TARDIS, that he can do whatever he wants. I mean... You can't, Russell T. Davies has been said that he wants to build a shared universe very much like he did the first time around because he had Torchwood. He also had the Sarah Jane Adventures. So, I mean, this sets up um, so much more that can happen. The fact that we have a 14th and 15th Doctor. Now, another question is this. Can the 14th Doctor regenerate into another Doctor? We don't know. Or the fact that we have 15 traveling through the universe, right? We got 15 traveling through the universe. What if from now on, if 14th in the 14th doctor ha uh, feels death, he's about to die. What if he is re he's the one who regenerates into past faces, Matt Smith, Peter Capaldi, Christopher Eccleson, Paul McGann. I mean, it opens up a floodgate of possibilities. Remember, Tom Baker's doctor appeared to 11 at the uh, museum as the curator and says, you might just find yourself revisiting some of the, some of the old faces, but maybe just the favorites. This could be the beginning of that. That was Moffat's era, era, by the way, but there's so much that can happen here, guys. I mean, this can explain how faces are returning because you have one who's the official continuation of the doctor but then you have the other doctor who is kind of bringing back the old faces it opens up an entire floodgate of possibilities here now they did acknowledge the flux they have acknowledged chimnall's era of the doctor and we're seeing a lot of differences here but the episode ends with donna her husband her daughter her mom having brunch with the doctor, you can see his TARDIS in the backyard, you know, and he, you know, he, he makes a, a mention of Rose being his, you know, his favorite niece. So the doctor is a pseudo uncle to Rose. That is Donna Noble's uh, daughter who happens to be transgender. Uh, I have, some people have made criticisms about that. As far as my book, I don't freaking care. Uh, if someone chooses to be, a male or female or gender neutral, that's their choice. It's their life. I'm perfectly fine with it. You know? Now, and they kind of joke around and the doctor's regaling them with a story that happened, uh, obviously, centuries before. And, you know, they're just having a good laugh, a good time. Mel is there hanging out with them. And they're just having an awesome time. The doctor just having, the doctor having a meal. Enjoying the life, having having a family, having you know, having roots. Now, the last time we saw anything like this was with Eleven, with Amy Pond and Rory, where you know 
the one time, the power of three, when the doctor came to stay, of course, that doctor was a little bit wired, you know, 11, you know, his attention span was very short, but this was a doctor who, you know, this is, I know I said doctor who, I didn't do that on purpose. Uh, the 14th doctor, he gets to slow down. I mean, sometimes life is just moving so fast. And now finally the doctor gets to kind of slow down. He gets to kind of enjoy life, enjoy the moment, you know, and I really can't wait to see what happens next. I really can't wait to see. I mean, anything and everything could happen. Um, Russell T. Davies, you know, if he does an expanded or shared universe, I would love to see what what the four, what 14 does. And the fact that 14 by generated, the fact that he revisited a face that they had had previously suggests that, hey, what if he regenerates into number eight? Paul McGann, one of my favorites. Um, but, hey, 14 can come back again. Tenant's face can come back again. There's... Right now, as far as the rules of regeneration, they are so far out the window. I mean, both 15 and 14 said that by generation was a myth. That they never knew that it was really really something that could actually happen, but it has. Um I'm I'm beyond stoked. I am so stoked, guys. Like I watched this yesterday. I'm make, I'm recording this on Sunday. Um I watched it yesterday afternoon with my wife and I loved it. She looked at me. She's like, I hate you. I hate you. I was like, what? She was like, I hate you. Because I was like, I was just hoping, praying that there was some loophole, something that would prevent tenants from, you know, fading away. Through that, you know, because he's always been one of my favorites. <clears throat> the fact that Russell T. Davies did this and he has his own TARDIS. I was like, yes. Um. And by the way, the, the TARDIS interior, this has to be probably my favorite TARDIS interior. Uh, go, I mean, the only other one that's been my most favorite was uh, technically 8's TARDIS. When uh, the TV movie, The en Enemy Within, uh, when Fox TV was trying to relaunch Doctor Who in the States, Paul McGann was the doctor. <clears throat> we had Sylvester McCoy in the beginning of that move, two-hour movie. But how that TARDIS interior was just so massive and lived in and just, it was just beyond imagination. I loved how that was. Don't get me wrong. I loved uh, Eccleston and Tennant's TARDIS. I did enjoy uh, what would later become Capaldi's TARDIS. But... I think this new TARDIS is, it shows us scope. I mean, these three specials have made Doctor Who look so damn cinematic. It, I don't think I can give an accurate description. I mean, it's just so cinematic. It gives us more depth. It makes it look way bigger on the inch side that we could ever imagine. I can't wait to see what happens next. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, Number 15 is going to need a, a wardrobe change. I'm wondering how the wardrobe is going to look. Um, I can't wait to see what the future holds for Doctor Who. It is tremendous. It's amazing. If you guys think so, please let me know in the comment section below. I know I ranted and raved on this episode. We're over 33 minutes long on this video. But I'm just blown away. I'm blown away. I'm going to be, I'm going to, in fact, uh, after I get done with this, I'm going to watch all three specials all over again as if it's one big ass movie because to me it was. Uh, I'm just loving it. Russell T. Davies, you are a madman in a box. Uh, you, you freaking killed it. I'm looking forward to seeing Shooty Gatway Christmas Day, his next adventure. I cannot wait. I'm going to, I cannot wait for the new era of Doctor Who. I'm sure you guys can't. By the way, guys, if you like this video, as always, give me a thumbs up. If you have some comments, questions, concerns, as always, you drop them in the comment section below. Or you can always message me at Dave's underscore dimension on Instagram. You can always email me at Dave's dimension 78 at gmail.com. And of course, as always, if you feel inclined, you want to help us help out the channel a little bit. We're kind of going through some tough times here personally. Um. Uh, 
There is our PayPal at Dave's Dimension. It's not required, but greatly appreciated if you feel the need to do so. Uh, if you feel inclined to do so, that'd be great. If not, guys, you guys, you know, I'm going to keep going with the channel. We still have a lot of stuff I need to unbox. Got a lot of Joes there. Uh, it's the holiday season. We're going to have a few twists, some turns, and some surprises. Uh, also... If you guys want to see more Doctor Who reviews, let me know in the comment section below or again, always message me and let me know what you want me to review. Do you want me to, to review past episodes? Let me know. Also, I am going to be, uh, this little side note, not related to Doctor Who, but I am going to be doing some updates with the Leapcast. Quantum Leap Season 2 has begun and it is a banger so far. Uh, we're going to be doing some recaps on that very soon. But guys, until next time, this is Dave from Dave's Mention. As always, you know what I'm going to say. I say it every single time. Keep on busting. And I'm always going to catch you on the flip side. Take care, guys. <laughs>